All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be going over why you should get a UPS to protect yourself from power failure on your Synology NAS. All right, so first off, what is a UPS? A UPS stands for Uninterrupted Power Supply. It's basically a big battery that in the event of power failure, it kicks on and powers all the devices hooked up to it. Now, the reason this is really important with a Synology is a Synology is a server and servers do not do great with unexpected power failure. Say a storm takes out power to your house. Your Synology without a UPS would power off unexpectedly. And that means that you could have data loss and a volume crash, especially if you have drives with write caches. Basically, most modern performance hard drives have little RAM caches on them for data. Anytime you're writing to a drive, it'll first write it to that little cache. Then whenever the head is near a sector where that's gonna be writing, it will then write the data to that sector. Basically, it speeds up the performance significantly because it gets the time when to write the data when it's most optimal. Rather than writing the data perfectly sequentially, it can do it in the most efficient order. However, with unexpected power loss, this data goes away, which can cause a drive pool to crash. Now, in almost all circumstances, the drive pool probably will be recoverable, but you could still lose data and take a long time to get everything back and running. And so to fight against this, it is highly recommended to have a UPS hooked up to your Synology. So the UPS I have is an APC 750 volt amp battery, and it has about a 300 kilojoule battery in there, which means it can power 100 watts for about 50 minutes. And so this is good enough for everything I need. Then the really nice thing that they have is they actually have a connection from the UPS to your Synology. Basically, you plug in a USB port to both the devices and it allows them to communicate. And this is great because it allows your Synology to power off safely if the battery is running low. This way, you're not gonna have any data loss even if the power does not come back on by the time the battery runs out because the UPS will tell your Synology to shut down before this happens. So one thing to note about UPSs is, is they're really heavy. So you're not gonna get, be getting into that pretty B-roll footage that I normally shoot because I don't wanna take this thing out of my rack and take down my entire network right now. But just trust me, it's in there. So another reason why Synology is really great is they've worked with manufacturers to create a compatibility list. It's split up into two different tiers. There is Synology tested, which means Synology has actually gotten a unit and gotten one of their NASAs and guaranteed that they will work. And then there's also vendor recommended, which is pretty good still. So you know it probably will work, but Synology themselves have not been able to test it. And so when you're buying a UPS, I would highly recommend making sure it's on this list so that way your NAS will safely power off if the battery starts to run out. All right, and so now, once you've hooked up your UPS and connected it to your Synology with the USB port, go ahead and log into DSM. And we're gonna go into Control Panel, Hardware and Power, and then UPS. And it should say UPS has been connected and that means we can enable UPS support. And so it's really easy. All you have to do is click enable UPS support. And we have two different ways that we can set up the UPS to shut down our Synology. You can either say, okay, if the power's not come back on after five minutes, go ahead and turn off my Synology and basically put it into a safe shutdown so you don't lose any data or you can wait until the UPS tells the Synology low battery. So the way I've got mine set up is just a five minute timer. And if the power has not come back on by then, I shut down my Synology then. This is because what I'm running on the Synology is not mission critical for uptime, but I really do not want data loss. Then since the Synology is powered down, it just powers my Wi-Fi network and things like that until the battery runs out. And if the battery runs out, it's a hard power failure, 
but the only things that are going to have a hard power failure on them are like my network switch and stuff, which is not a big deal. They are totally fine with you pulling the plug out of them. You can also go in and click device information and see the device information. This is actually one of the things I've noticed is this estimated battery time left is actually inaccurate for my Synology. It says zero minutes, but according to the LCD panel, I think I've got an hour and a half on here. And so watch out for that. But you can see the percent charged, which is the really important thing. If you have multiple Synologies, you can also enable a UPS server, which basically has this main Synology tell all of the other Synologies hooked up to the network that the power has gone out and that the UPS says shut down. And then you just enter their IP addresses here. And so another thing I would recommend doing if you've got a UPS is to go into general and select under power recovery, restart automatically after power failure. This way, when the power comes back on, your Synology will boot back up, meaning you don't have to go in and turn it on. And if you're accessing it remotely, it'll turn back on without you having to call your neighbor to turn it on. And then just go ahead and hit apply. And so now, if there is unexpected power loss and the power does not come back on for five minutes, my Synology will safely boot down, meaning I don't have any data loss, which is really critical. Another nice thing is once the Synology shuts down, there's very little power draw on my UPS, and so we can actually run my Wi-Fi network for about two hours after that. So it's nice being able to still have Wi-Fi even if your power's off, because most of the time, it's only gonna take out either your internet line or your power line, but rarely both. All right, and so another thing to note, if you do wanna test out and make sure this all works with your UPS, when you're simulating a power loss, don't just pull out the plug from the wall because that removes the ground pin. That's that bottom pin on a three pin plug. Instead, what you should do is you should take a power strip, put that in between the wall and the UPS plug, and use that to turn off the power to the UPS. That way, that ground pin is still hooked up to the ground line of your house, meaning if something does go wrong and there's a short, your circuit is still grounded. That is why any high voltage appliances always have that ground pin hooked up to the chassis of the appliance. If a live wire were to hit anywhere on the chassis, rather than dangerously charging it, it would simply cause a short circuit because it would be put to ground and the breaker would trip, safely cutting off power, hopefully. All right, and I think that's it for this. Go ahead, put in the comments below any other tutorials you'd like to see me make and have a good one. Bye.